In this lecture, we're going to show the process of constructing the reaction influence lines for a continuous beam. Consider the two-span continuous beam. It has three vertical reactions, one at A, one at B, and one at C. We can draw each reaction influence line qualitatively with ease. Similar to the case of determinate beams, we simply push the beam upward by a unit force at the support and draw the deformation that results. While doing so, we assume the support no longer restrains the beam from moving upward. This is the influence line for the vertical reaction at A. Unlike the case of determinate beams, here the resulting deformation is nonlinear. The influence lines for reactions at B and C can be constructed in a similar manner. Here is the reaction influence line for B, and here is the influence line for the reaction at C. These qualitatively constructed diagrams, however, are of limited use for analyzing the effect of moving concentrated loads on the beam. Let's see why that is the case. Suppose we wish to determine the maximum reaction force at B due to a moving load. The influence line shows that the maximum reaction at B develops when the load is positioned at D. But where is the exact location of point D? The qualitatively drawn diagram does not give us that information. To locate D, we need to derive the mathematical equation for the diagram. But how do we write the mathematical expression for a reaction influence line? Simple. We need to analyze the beam parametrically in terms of n using, say, the slope deflection method. If you are not familiar with this method, please review lectures SA27 through SA33. Let's denote the position of the unit load relative to the left end of the beam as n. It varies from 0 to 8, since the overall length of the beam is 8 meters. The beam consists of two segments, AB and BC. We need to write a pair of slope deflection equations for each segment. For AB, they are... Here, theta A and theta B are the members' end rotations, and MAB and MBA are the member end moments. Concerning the fixed end moments in the equations, the presence of a concentrated load on the beam leads to two scenarios. Scenario 1, where n is less than or equal to 2, the fixed end moments are computed using equations. Scenario 2, where n is greater than or equal to 2, the fixed end moments are 0. We also need to write a pair of slope deflection equations for member BC. Here they are. The fixed end moments are given using this pair of equations when n is greater than or equal to 2. Otherwise, the moments are 0. Given that the beam has three joints, we need to write three moment equilibrium equations, one equation per support. The equations are When n is less than or equal to 2, the expanded form of the equations become And when n is greater than or equal to 2, we can rewrite the equations as the solution for the first set of equations is for the second set we get substituting these solutions back into the slope deflection equations we get the member end moments for set 1 we get and set 2 gives us knowing the member end moments we can easily determine the reaction forces at A and C. The free body diagrams for segments AB and BC enable us to write the following equilibrium equations. Solving them for RA and RC, we get 
And since the sum of the forces in the y direction for the entire beam must vanish, we can write or Now we need to come up with another set of algebraic equations for the support reactions based on the second solution set. Here are the equilibrium equations. Here are the two support reactions. And setting the sum of the forces in the y direction to zero, we get... In summary, the support reactions in terms of the position of the unit load are... Now, we're ready to determine the maximum effect of a moving load on the reactions. Suppose our beam is a part of a bridge that needs to carry a maximum vehicular load of 20 kN. We wish to determine the maximum upward and downward reaction forces that could develop at A. Having the influence line for the reaction force, we can see that the maximum upward reaction at A occurs when the concentrated load is at A. Then, the maximum upward reaction force due to the vehicular load is 20 kN. To determine the load position that causes maximum downward reaction force at A, we need to locate the point of minimum in the influence line diagram. By visual inspection, we can tell that the point is located between B and C, where the second reaction equation governs. So we take the derivative of the equation and set it equal to zero in order to determine the position at which the function attains its minimum value. Solving for n, we get... Evaluating the reaction function at n equals 4.53, we get negative 0.43. Then the maximum downward reaction at A is 8.66 kN. Now let's also find the maximum upward reaction at B. The influence line shows that the maximum height of the diagram is located in segment BC. This means we need to take the derivative of the second reaction equation, then set it to zero, and solve for n. So the maximum reaction force at B develops when the vehicle is 3.53 meters to the right of A. At that point, the height of the influence line is 1.24, which makes the maximum upward reaction at B equal to 24.85 kN. If you would like to see how the influence lines change shape as we change the position of the roller support at B, and to observe the effect of a moving load on the reaction forces, go to the interactive web page referenced here.